Welcome to the Chill with Phil weekly podcast. Everything about e-commerce, digital marketing, growth hacking, strategies, and more. If you're passionate about these topics, you will definitely want to hang out with us the next hour. Now, here's your host, Phil Kiprianu. Hey guys, this is Phil Kiprianu live for Chill with Phil. Everything about e-commerce, digital marketing, growth hacking, affiliate marketing, and much more. So if you're passionate like me, you'll definitely want to hang out with us the next hour. And today we have a very special guest. Basically, it's the co-founder of Bold Commerce. If you never heard about Bold Commerce, you might be missing something because they're one of the most successful app business developers for Shopify and they have been business for a while um, and will come Jason Myers from Bold. So how are you my friend? I'm awesome man. Thank you so much for having me on. It's it's honestly it's an honor. Uh, I mean thank you for joining me uh, on that. I mean uh, we've been chatting here and there for a couple of years now but mm. it's the first time we, we see live uh, <laughs> on Skype so that's <laughs> yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. So you can you can have a full relationship without ever actually talking to someone online. It seems so. like so we we learn everything yeah. new like every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, so they will meet in real life. Yeah, for go. sure. I yeah. intend to go to Shopify Unite this year, so we might okay. cross okay. Uh, there. And you know what? We are fellow Canadians, you know. So uh, just on yeah. different side of the pro of uh, of, Can- of Canada of <laughs> Canada. One, one province between us, but it's a long way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. tell me about, you know, you are, I mean, the business is from Saskatchewan, is that? Or Manitoba. 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 Here we go. Yeah. And when uh, when all this start, basically? Yeah, sure. I mean, okay, so we, um, just like a super brief history, like I uh, ran online stores since 1998. It was the first store I ever built. Um, I know I, I don't look that old, I know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like back in 98, we built them with, uh, it was Microsoft front page, started building stores, then uh, started moving them onto eBay, like back back before Amazon was big, eBay was yeah. the main marketplace. Um, and then after a while, started to realize that, you know, I was kind of renting customers and didn't really have a, a brand. And so started moving them onto individual stores. Fast forward, so that would have been like 2004, fast forward to... 2010, um, I had just heard about this platform called Shopify, and uh, I, I got an email from Mailchimp saying, "Hey, we now have an app that works on Shopify." I had never heard of it before, so um, moved some of my stores on to Shopify, and uh, right away, I think I was like store number 4,000 or something. It was like really early on, and um, right away, I saw the the app store and. For a merchant, like you're a merchant, you it's kind of like being a kid in a candy store. You go in there and you, I mean, at the time there was only one or two new apps a week. Now it seems like sometimes there's ten a day, <laughs> but yeah. um, it it was like I would just keep going and checking what what app is new. I had this long list of things I wanted to build for myself. I'm not a developer, but I happen to have some good friends that are, and we one day were sitting at a pub here in Winnipeg, and and I kind of said, hey, what if we built this app and Honestly, it was like maybe we could make a little vacation or beer money on the side. So we built Upsell, which was the first app we ever built. And uh, we just did it as an experiment. We thought that would be the easiest app, which it's funny because now – so that was 2012. So now it's like seven years later and we're still working on that app. Like we're – it's – the basic version of it was simple. But now we're we're adding in like AI and machine learning and, um, you know, like upselling after checkout. And like there's so much more than just – what it was five years ago. So we always laugh because we thought that would be the easiest app and we're still working on it. But um, yeah, so fast forward to today where uh, I think we actually just crossed 300 employees this week. We're, um, we're, in, we're all in Winnipeg. Every single employee is here. Um, we have, I guess, about 20, I think it's 21 live apps in the App Store. We have a lot of private apps too, which I don't know if a lot of people know, but um, we've got over probably over a hundred private apps that we've built like one off for clients. And then a lot that we've actually, um, well, you've probably noticed this over the last year, we've actually taken a lot out of the app store. Um, we had marketplace in there. We had by the measurement in there, we had donations manager. We had, you know, there was a, um, product comparison, uh, over the last year, that's kind of been a real focus of ours is 
to become more focused. So here we are today, 21 apps, 300 people, all based out of Winnipeg and still having fun. Oh, that's totally crazy, <laughs> basically. <laughs> but I mean, how this grow came out? I mean, how did you like from a small, like, let's say 10, 15 people to 300 in a short amount of time? How did you manage that? How did this happen, basically? Well, it was, um, I honestly, okay. So like, I think if you ever asked anyone about their business and if you said like, how did you do it? And if they didn't say timing and luck was a big part of it, they would be lying. <laughs> so timing, timing was really good. We, um, you know, I, if we, I, I, there's obviously still a ton of opportunity on Shopify. It's a great platform. It's, I, it's by far, you know, it's, it's one of, if not the best e-commerce platform in the world. And, um, so I still think it's an amazing opportunity. But at the time, like they had, when we put our first app on Shopify, I think they had 25,000 merchants. So we we really kind of started building on Shopify. It was a bit of a gamble then, right? Like building building on Shopify now when they have 800,000 merchants isn't as much of a gamble. Um, so the one thing that we decided to do early on was to build only on Shopify. Like back then, everyone had an app on every platform. And we said, instead of building one app on every platform, let's build a lot of apps on one platform and just try to really know that platform inside and out and just be experts on it. And that gamble paid off. Like, um, and if, you know, obviously if Shopify hadn't grown, if the timing would have been different, it might, might not have. Um, but as far as like now, so it paid off because Shopify grew, but then like, I think what you might be getting at is there's a ton of stuff we had to learn, um, as we grew this company, we've just had like amazing people who stepped up and become leaders. And, um, cause to run, like there's over 300 people here. There's five people that started this week that I haven't even met yet. And there's like eight people last week. I'm going to, I'm in one office. The other office is about five minutes away. I'm going to head over there after this. And every Friday we have a town hall and all the new people introduce themselves. Um, so it's crazy. Like we have just really, really good people. And I think, uh, at the end of the day, you're only as good as your people. Like it's just uh, every single product, whether you're looking at like Slack or Stripe or Shopify or any software is just people behind it. Right. So, um, we've been fortunate to have some really good people join our team. And so I have to give them the credit. <laughs> that, that's amazing. And basically it's one thing I, I'm seeing right now. Um, I, I don't know if we can call that a trend, but everything is much more focused on the human being than back then if you remember i don't know if you your father had a business or some people in your family and it was just different mindset about how you were managing people and people were much more as a as a, someone on the chessboard yeah. than yep. now it's much more you know we're building that together we are part of this movement we are human after all to quote daft yeah. punk let's say and um and, and and that's it. I think I think this is something that is changing. I think in the whole business world on how we are focusing on um, much more people that will drive, but that will bring value and will take it not only as um, as a project, but as part of their life. Mm -hmm. uh, and and even truly, they will they will be part of this business as it was their own business. You know. Yeah, I think you're, you are right. And we could operate our business in that old fashioned way that you mentioned, but we would not have been able to grow as fast as we did. Um, that's a limiting mindset. Like the limiting mindset is thinking that everything has to be done your way. And the thing that you know is the best solution. Um, like we like to say, like we hire good people and as leaders, our main job is to give them the tools they need and remove roadblocks and let them do amazing work. Like that's why we hired them. Um, by, uh, you're right. Like I think a lot of people, um, it's changing though. But like the way it used to be is you'd hire people that were amazing and then try to micromanage them and not really grow, right? So, um, are we just? Yeah, you nailed it. Like I think is you have to trust people, give them tools, and then just remove road, roadblocks. Like that's really our main focus. Um, 
like we don't do the hands-on <laughs> the, stuff, the stuff anymore right so so that's uh, that's so, part of the yeah. good habits to, to 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 go with you know especially and i think mm. you know a lot of people trying to figure you know how to scale and sometimes how fast you can scale but you know if you can tell me about you know you told me like uh, it was luck and you know uh, and a bunch of stuff that came in but Do you think, apart from that, there would be something that people need to, and apart from the human factor, that made the trigger instead of being like this small app company and mm -hmm. deciding probably uh, with your partners that, no, now it's time to make this move, and from this move on, now we are going to, to get at this level. What, what was the sort of trigger yeah, you went to? It's funny you ask that because there actually was a specific day and we can nail the point in time where we had to consciously make that decision. So there's, there's nothing I'm there like, man, I, I mean, sometimes every sing, single type of business is good. Whether you're a solopreneur running it by yourself, whether you're a small lean team, whether you're growing big, they're all good. I think the thing that's important is you have to know who you are as a company. Um, because I, I think for a while we didn't, and we probably got up to about 15 people where, you know, every time we had to hire someone, like it was exciting, but it was also like, ah, oh, there goes our profits. Like you get a little bit more profitable and then you got to hire someone and then you're like, oh shoot, we could be more, oh, oh shoot, we got to hire someone. It was like sort of pulling teeth, but sort of exciting. But it was like, we, we, the four of us, there's three other founders and we all sat down one day. We're like, we can't, every time we have to hire someone have to have this debate, we have to decide what type of company we want to be. Um, do we want to be a growth company? Do we want to be a lifestyle company? Do we want to be like as lean as, as lean and profitable or do we want to put everything back in and grow? So we decided we wanted to put everything in and grow and hopefully, um, hopefully do something big one day that where we can affect the lives of hundreds of employees and not just us four. And so now like that framed our decision for the next five years. And so we've like every single time we've made money, it's, we've put it right back in. Um, so that, like, you know, a couple of years ago, it was like each month it was <laughs> okay. How many can we hire this month? Okay. We can afford one more. Okay. Next month. Oh, we can afford four more. Oh, one more. And it was literally like that for five years. And it was just as, as much as we could do. So, um, I think that kind of like self-awareness and deciding with your founders is really important. Because the thing that sucks is when you're kind of growing and you don't really know what type of company you are. I, I th and, and that's, that's funny that you're bringing that because basically I was listening to uh, Tim Ferriss podcast with Toby Luke and he said mm. exactly the same thing about At a certain time, he had this specific discussion that he can <laughs> get back. <laughs> he remember funny. that time, and he was saying, "I still, I want you know, just to 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 play like uh, to play for fun with uh, that new tool, which is my Shopify my Shopify platform, and yeah. having like the lifestyle I, I'm doing, or I want to bring that to the next level." And he had like this moment of aha moment and say, okay, now it's time to make the move. And I want to be a growth company instead of just being a lifestyle. And But, yeah. on the other side, which is, I don't know if you read about the Gumroad article uh, about the founder of Gumroad, yeah. which is very yeah. funny because it's almost totally opposite. He wanted like to be yeah. super a, a growth company to start. And then he figured out that was not for him and wanted to be much more lifestyle, you know? And I yeah. think, it, and it, it, yeah, you can go on. Oh, I, just, <laughs> I, I, I read that article and I loved it. In fact, and, and that's why like I always preface that by saying there isn't a right or wrong. It's just knowing. And I think um, it, it could be said for anything. Like you, you could be, do you want to play in the NHL or do you want to just like, there's no wrong answer, right? Like if you yeah. want to go ahead, if you don't there, like that's totally fine too. And I think the thing was is with him, he, he started going down one path and getting these investors and everything was driven by revenue and numbers. And maybe, maybe he didn't have the best, um, a good matching personality of investors. Like, I think that's important. You can have investors that really get the importance of culture and it's not just numbers. So like I, you know, if he, I, he didn't really get into that, but I agree. Like that was a really interesting article to read. 
Yeah, totally. To and and it, it all in it all come back so like to say to what's your what what is, it it is really inside yourself that drives you, you know, really, you know, and mm. are you okay with that and does your passion still translate through that and and um and totally I think that makes total sense. So you went at that point where uh you decided to do the growth and you um basically went to uh, probably investors or you make that decision that, okay, now I have to open my books, try to find people that believes also in our projects, show me like how we can get like that growth. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, how were you feeling or your, 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 the partners were feeling or yourself or the whole team was feeling because it's totally another mindset. Now, you know, you're, you're so used to work and to, to get it, being in some sort of a close uh, environment, but now it's almost like you are getting public, you're getting outsiders coming. And sometimes, I mean, uh, I'm taking myself as an entrepreneur. I mean, I'm afraid always, you know, that what I'm gonna, what people are going to uh, force me to do, to do, or are they going to influence myself and my visions or things like that? So, yeah. what was the, the the challenge basically on that kind of stuff? Um, well, interestingly enough, just up until three months ago, now we we didn't have any investors. Um, so we were completely bootstrapped for the first seven years. It was just the four of us. Um, but just in December, I know you probably saw the, saw the news. We, we, we raised our first round. Um, so we've had a little bit of experience now with investors, but not a ton. So I don't know if I'm the best, but I, I will say that in the four months, I guess now of having a, a board and having, um, like, meetings with the board and it's it's actually been really good they um th the wisdom and the clarity like when you're building a business you're in the forest and sometimes you just get caught up on like the day-to-day -day and it's like what's urgent not what's important you're focusing on stuff that is um urgent but not strategic and board members only see strategic now like there's the assumption that investors and the board they just care about profits and they care but like they that's one way to look at it but they really at the core if you have a good one what they care is about what is strategic for the long-term growth of the company and they're always living like as as a company the, the people that work here they're living today the the board is living three to six months out maybe a year out so you're constantly having discussions which before we were only having discussions in today like what do we got to do today what fires do we got to put out today but now once a month we have these meetings where all the conversations are out here and it really it's refreshing like they have a clear insight into things and they're like we we can say something in a board meeting and they can within 10 seconds understand if that is not a core strategic thing that our company should be doing where before we would kind of like bat these ideas around and try different things um so i've actually really enjoyed it so far i i but again i said like i might not be the best because it's only been a few months but so far it's been really good just having having that sounding board and you know the guys that have gone through it before and just hearing because they've grown other SaaS companies and similar spaces and so um, for us, it's been good. <laughs> so they, they, they are basically also helping you to challenge yourself. You know, it's not only direction, but giving you more, much more the, 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 the time to think about and if it's the right decision. So you can take basically that decision together instead of forcing you to do stuff. Yeah, one of the main re jobs of a board is to... Um, uh, what is it challenge ideas and question assumptions there they 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 want to they they should have their nose in the business but their fingers out and if you have a proper board that's the way they run but when you get a board with their fingers are in the business um and and our board has been amazing at saying like no nope, that's not even something we need to be involved in like um they're very good at knowing like what is helping going to grow the company strategically and what do they just trust the existing leaders that are there right so i feel like we've got a lot of wisdom in knowing that but i could see how if you had a young board like who maybe it's someone on like the first time and they don't know and they get really passionate like if if i'm young and if i invested in your business i'd be like oh no phil you gotta do it this way you gotta do it this way but i shouldn't be doing that i should be like i trust you 
you're, I'm investing in you as a person. I believe in you. So I want my fingers out of the business. I just want to know like where are things going in six months? And I feel like we have a good scenario like that, but I could see how if, and I don't know, like the founder of Gumroad, like maybe he, maybe they were too much fingers in uh, and not just nose in. Right. So it's definitely, yeah. Yeah. It makes perfect, perfect sense. And I, I think you, you nailed it on that is it's always about how do you surround yourself inside your business, mm. outside your business. And if you have partners or like uh, investors or things like that, it should be treated exactly the same way. Why you would do a difference there uh, just for, let's say, the cash or for, for that? No. I think like yeah. when you're dealing, it's it's some sort of a, mar- a wedding, you know, your mar- marriage, you're, you're oh, getting. So, so if you tend to, to live with your wife for until your death, I mean, you should... <laughs> Should, I mean, it should work somewhere, you know. If not, I mean, it's not yep. gonna get cool. So, um, yeah, t- totally. Um, let's jump in more, you know, um, with the with the apps, the IDs there, because I think that the 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 goal also is to understand what's your vision on the app, what's your vision also on Shopify App Store. You know, I've seen your apps also elsewhere. You know, like on uh, Lightspeed, I've seen it also on uh, uh, Big Commerce and things like that. You told me at first yeah. that when you started, you were only focus on Shopify, but you know, what's the, and also, you know, let's talk also about the changes now on on Shopify apps, approvals and things like that, just to have like this global vision now, uh, where it is going. Sure. Uh, where, where do you want to start? <laughs> yeah, I, a multiple question. Yeah, like you see. <laughs> yeah. we want to learn uh, much more. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Well, we've we've gone through our our evolutions over the years. We've had as many as like thirty something apps in the app store. We've pared it down quite a bit. Um, in the last, I would say, year and a half, we've um, kind of restructured our thought process on instead of just like building apps what problems are we really trying to solve and what solutions do we really care about? And we've actually narrowed it down to six and the apps that didn't fit in those six, we shelved. There are still merchants that are using them, but they're no, they're, they're no longer in the app store. Um, so like the six kind of solutions we, we, we care about is we, we care about the checkout, um, which is, mostly for the aspect of like helping with B2B um, and wholesale, but that's actually a lot more stuff coming down the pipe. Um, So currently we just have like kind of one solution for that, but that's one area. Customization is an area we care about. And actually like if you go on our website and you click on solutions, there's six areas. So it's, it's B2B checkout, customization, loyalty, conversion. And that is like upsell discount, like helping stores convert more. Um, we call it bold everywhere, which is internationalization and then subscriptions. So uh, those are kind of like six core areas and all of our development in the next foreseeable future um, is going to be like fall under one of those buckets. Uh, so, yeah, so I guess like we're, I mean, we're, you've probably noticed like we haven't really like launched a new app in a while, but we're, we're spending a lot of time trying to really improve all of the apps that are out there. Like we, we shelved about 10 and then the ones that we're keeping, like we're really going deep in them. We're start we're, we're one of our big focuses is really adding enterprise features. We call it, it's does not necessarily have to be enterprise, but like just for larger merchants. So, um, you know, mostly like on Shopify, like plus and advanced users, um, uh, so they don't mind paying more, but they want to get good quality and good features and robust APIs. They care about customization, how flexible is an app. So uh, that's where a lot of our development is going uh, into existing apps. Um, and actually, really, one of the biggest focuses is making them partner friendly. That's that's been a big one of it. Is uh, we we have a we have a partner network just like Shopify does. Ours is much smaller. I think we've got about seventeen hundred partners um, who all like user apps in some fashion and really making it so and some of them are like really customizable some of them not as so much they're all at various stages um but we want to make it so like you can take one of our apps and just customize the crap out of it like do anything you want um so it that's a big focus of ours as well too you'll you'll notice more and more 
of our apps coming out with like full APIs that you can like for subscriptions, you can run a subscription program. Doesn't you can have a Shopify store, but they could, you know, build it into an app or a backend of an ERP system where they can update them. Just like stuff like that. So um, almost uh, st- standalone. Pardon me. Uh, almost standalone apps that are, uh, that can live by themselves. Basically they could. Yeah. Or yeah. Or multi like, so, I think where where commerce is going, like something I you've probably noticed this too, is um, the the platforms are becoming more and more of a piece of the solution and not the whole solution. And like Shopify is amazing. We we they're our preferred platform to work with by far. Um, but there's not always there's actually been scenarios where there isn't an, even a need for a platform. Um, you know, some some brands just need well subscriptions, maybe I don't know, but like it could be um, could be something else, like some other aspect where memberships or something they they uh, they have their products living in a ERP, like it's in Netsuite, it's somewhere else. They want to have some aspect of commerce, and it's that concept of like headless commerce, right? It's it doesn't have to be in one platform or it could be multi-platform you can have aspects of your site on a wordpress site on shopify could be on in an app it could be in social channels so um yeah so we're also trying to make sure that our apps work in like wherever merchants want to sell um so that that's a focus of ours as well too and i think that's just like going to be where e-commerce goes and we're just trying to make sure we're positioned to be able to help merchants as it goes there I think that totally makes sense and basically that's one thing when I'm starting to work with clients that's the first thing I'm trying to to figure out is not on which on which platform they should do right away and sometimes even you know they have there's this clients that are coming and they say oh I want to go directly on Magento but first of all why are you are you are going you want to go on Magento first you know we're going to figure out if this is a good fit for mm-hmm. you and then later on you know we'll see if that can uh, uh, get there, you know, instead of going straight. So there's like customers that comes with some predefined ideas of what they want and some that doesn't have uh, anything. But basically, we try to get out the out- the outcome of it um, at-, at first before mm-hmm. doing anything else. And I think this is where uh, the-, 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 the whole minding of where commerce is going, I think, and offering that flexibility is right. It's spot on because like you said, um, you can do a part everywhere now. I mean, there's no one straight place to do everything because, and also each of these platforms have at a certain point their goods and their bads, and some can be used for one thing mm-hmm. spe- specifically and the other for another thing. But if you have, like, yeah. like you say, a piece of software that can uh, travel across all these platforms, that is... Um, is great and i think it's really about interconnecting the dots between all this kind mm-hmm. of stuff that makes a lot of difference and um and yeah i think it's it's right on right on yeah yeah we're it's kind of a solution first approach it's like a, a store will see themselves as a certain type of a business like they are a b2b business they are a subscription business they are a membership access style business they're a you know that like they or, or, or maybe they're not even a certain type of business, but they have like a list of things that they care about. They, I, I mean, you're right. The odd time someone does come and say, I want to be on this platform. But I find that sometimes it's not even, they don't care. They just say like, here's my list of requirements. And you, you tell me what's best. And so um, we just, yeah, we just want to make sure that we are able to work wherever or, you know, on any platform or doesn't even need to be on a platform. But um like at the end, we just want to do what's best for the merchant, right? And so I never, we don't, yeah, like we don't want to be in a situation where we say like, no, this is the only thing. There's the only place. And I, you know, all that said, like Shopify is a really, really good platform. Um, there's very few times where it doesn't make sense, but, you know, there are there are the odd times. And so um, we just have to go where commerce is going, really. Exactly. I think there's... So, um. The, the, I mean, the, there's multiple ways to, 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 to look at it. And, and the one thing I, I want to bring on is, um, you know, we're talking about, you know, multiple platforms and also 
one thing I'm looking, I'm seeing a lot right now is the replatforming as well. You know, there's a lot of uh, people that were mm. on legacy software for the past 10 years, let's say, and they want to move on to a new solution that they don't have to handle all this, you know, uh, craziness of tech thing, updating their site, updating this and that all in the back end, having like two or three developers that cost them much more than the, the dollars they're actually making and things yeah. like that, you know. Yeah. And... We are seeing, you know, some sort of uh, of time that okay, does that make sense to bring them to Shopify or Shopify Plus or anything like that? Mm -hmm. And because they're this kind of old guard or old saying that Shopify was, you know, only for beginners or things like that, I'm seeing still seeing a lot of people that were basically, let's say, on Magento or Domainware or anything like that that are a bit um, hard to convince to come to Shopify, even if we can make almost exactly or exactly what they're looking for, you know. And one thing that comes a lot is multi-language, uh, multi-currency, and things like that. And one thing I've seen is um, you fixed a part of that with the bold cashier from what I've seen, mm -hmm. you know. Was that part mm -hmm. of the strategy because you've seen that kind of same stuff coming over and over? You know, I'll tell you how Bold Cashier actually started. We So we have um, a division of our company that just – we do, like, custom projects. And we kept having large brands come to us for something, and it always required a custom checkout. Like, the first one we did was a project for Time Life. And this was years ago. They needed something um, – a solution because they, they wanted to do – they sold all their DVDs and five easy payments of 1999 or whatever. That's like time lifestyle model. So we couldn't do it. We built a custom checkout. We put them on Shopify, but we just – we built a custom checkout for them to be able to do five easy payments. And then we did one for um, – it was a big uh, food company in New York called Chef, um, where you order – pre-made meals kind of thing um they wanted to have stored accounts so when a customer checks out they can pick which credit card saved and enter couldn't do that like on the native shopify checkout so we built them a custom checkout and there's more like we just kept building <laughs> custom checkouts for different clients and then one day we just said well why don't we just build a checkout that is developer friendly that we can use as a tool and so we use it internally like we have tons of merchants on it and it's super from a custom development side like it's incredibly flexible you can pretty much do anything on it um, and a lot of other agencies are starting to use it as well too like um, we just had one uh, for example wanted to do a solution for a merchant who sells shoes and they want to have it so when you buy a pair of shoes uh, like say you buy a size 10 it sends the nine and the 11 or the nine and a half and 10 and a half or whatever. So then it, um, the customer places the order, they send the different sizes. You, a, a tokenization or um, authorization on the card can only last like seven days. So they give them 30 days to return the sizes they're not using. And then the thing is, if they don't return it, they want to be able to charge the, the customer, but they get 30 days to just keep the one size that fits and re return the other. So they needed to build this. So they built a custom app on top of cashier that would do exactly that. So now it's like try before you buy kind of thing. You get the sizes that comes with a prepackaged thing, goes back cash. If it doesn't, if they don't, if the merchant doesn't mark it, that it arrived back cashier automatically charges it because it tokenizes the card. It's not stored. Like it's not just an authorization. Um, they could do it 60 days later. Um, we've had people want to build, proper pre-orders for example so you can you know if you right now if you do a pre-order um you actually have to charge the customer and like let's say you're selling something and you want to actually charge them four months later when this new the next playstation comes out or whatever um so someone built a cashier plugin that the orders go through it holds the orders tokenizes the card four months later when the product is in they built a little back-end admin they can go in enter the product say this product is in now finds all the orders charges all the credit cards creates the orders in shopify super cool solution like it it's it really is like all these unique things that these agencies want to do it's really a cool tool for them so we built it for ourselves, thinking like instead of just building these one-off checkouts let's build a little platform that they can use um or that we can use and then we opened it up and then we said like well let's just let 
anyone use this. So we were using it internally for a while, um, just kind of like for a lot of one-off solutions. And then it really, what it does is it, like it really helps a lot of our apps just be better. Like with like loyalty points, you can use the points like a cash in the checkout with upsell. You can check out after the upsell with subscriptions. It, it is a, it enables tokenization. So for subscriptions with um, multi-currency, it actually bills. I mean, Shopify has a multi-currency solution, which is good. Um, it uses Shopify payments, which I, you know, isn't every currency, but with cashier, the way we do it is it actually just changes the payment gateway. So you literally could have, 153 i think it supports different currencies being built you just you have to have a payment <laughs> gateway in each of those That's but crazy. uh it swap it swaps out the payment gateway um just a lot of like neat things uh we had a, a client that needed to do their publicly traded company and if you're publicly traded you might not know this or not but um you can't legally charge until the order is shipped you're not supposed to so the way that almost most most checkouts work is the order's placed. It captures the payment. No, it authorizes. But if you want to capture it on shipment, it's a manual process. You have to remember to click capture and then ship it. It's a bit of a process. So someone built an automated app that is capture on shipment. So it tokenizes when the order's changed to fulfilled, it auto captures. So whether it's through a a third-party logistics company changing it to fulfilled or whatever. So then it meets the legal requirements for publicly traded companies where they can't capture payment before ship. So I don't know, just a lot of like things like that. Like it, it, um, yeah, that's yeah. totally, that's totally insane to see the possibilities basically, because, you know, I think like a lot of people feel sometime that, I mean, you are, um, you, you are stuck with things in, in Shopify because either there's no app, either, I mean, it's made like that by default, but if you uh, have an ID and you have the, the proper developers, uh, they can do almost everything basically. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what people need to understand as well is how flexible it is. And um, and more, we're going to see case studies like that. I think this will open minds to uh, other people because I, I feel, and I'm working with developers, and sometimes they, they feel by default, oh, no, we're going to go with this uh, platform because we know we can do everything. But basically, they mm -hmm. could probably do everything as well with Shopify. It's just that they're not yeah. aware of that. And um, and the other that, thing... That oh, is, yep. That's the biggest That's the biggest benefit of Shopify is... Um, you you know like it's like i it's like your iphone like if you don't like the calendar app that apple comes with there's 20 others you can pick from if you don't like the to-do list app there's 20 others um and i think that's a big strength of shopify is they've got a good like basic version of everything it's an amazing platform but if you want to do something a different way there's 20 other apps uh to do it and i think like every merchant needs a different requirement you can't build one that fits everything but shopify is a really good platform that you could pretty much build anything on top of like they're that's that but to me like that's their strength that's crazy so now we know it's it's going there and it's going to evolve um shopify unite 2019 is coming somewhere in june what are yeah. your prediction right now about the shopify platform and where it's going to evolve Oh man, I have to. <laughs> know, I have to know what I'm allowed to say. What I oh can't say. oh oh! <laughs> um, be careful, be careful. We don't yeah, want to put you no, in a situation that you. <laughs> There's going to be. Um, I mean, oh. <laughs> I, you know what? I honestly, I don't think I can. I, I might. I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, but there's going to be crazy stuff. I mean, they're going to release some crazy stuff. They always do. <laughs> they are going to probably, I would, you know, some things, okay, some things I can expect that I don't have any insight on is um, I think POS is going is, is going to be a big, big thing. Like I, I just, I look at, and I can say this because I don't know anything. I could be totally wrong here. <laughs> so, so this is just a guess. Yeah. Um, but I look at like Square and I look at like who's potential, who has land grab, right? Like from from Shopify's perspective, they have to be thinking about real estate. Like how do they yeah. own the customer relationship? And, 
You look at a company like Square and how far they've got with just POS, and now you know they purchased Weebly, and so that's an interesting dynamic there. Weebly has a basic level of commerce, and that could be, you know, like Square is coming it from from one side, Shopify is coming it from the online side, and maybe so. I I I think that POS is going to become, especially with like as they go to plus merchants, like all these plus merchants that are starting to have standalone stores, right? Um, so they're going to have to start really doubling down on POS so they they don't go to other platforms. So I expect that to be, I don't know if it'll be this Unite or next one, but I think that's going to be a big, I mean, if you, if you want to look at growth potential, like they got 800,000 online merchants. Like imagine if they started to have Shopify POS in every pub and taxi and local market and like they could have millions and millions right so that's a big big potential area for them and shopify pos right now is um i don't think i'd I'm not saying anything out of line here but like it's not the most robust solution um but it's good and i think with a little bit of work it could be great and i, th- I i'm pretty sure they are going to they know that and they're working on it so i would expect something around that i mean lots of other stuff too like there's going to be some more apis opening i have a few ideas which one i probably can't say but like they're yeah i don't know we'll see <laughs> that's great and and i think you, you're right i mean uh you've seen like uh, today lightspeed uh got uh on the trading market they they, they became public <laughs> one billion dollars uh evaluation uh which is big and they're they're mainly into pos and i will remember talking to the CEO uh, one or two years ago and he was telling me basically the average store uh, that I mean the average money that their store have it's in the millions in terms of revenues compared to Shopify which was probably into 50,000 at that time you know average uh, what they were making so you can see very fast where the money is and what part of the pie you need to to grab if you want to grow there and yeah. same thing like square like uh, square and wibbly i mean uh uh lightspeed where uh basically a pos company they bought like a seo shop if i remember uh mm. european uh companies that were doing basically the the the, the e-commerce part online and they, they they put that together so it's it's very funny because you have like this two opposite ecosystem that they're going at certain time find fight against one yeah. against together but yeah. i think like the the biggest and probably the most uh important point that shopify has is their community for sure as big as it is and uh even right now was looking at the 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 latest stats it's i think shopify now is really in the top three e-commerce most used e-commerce platform where a couple years ago it was like ranked like 10 or seven so you can see huge growth there and uh, yeah. part of confidence now we're, we're seeing now really big store getting uh, a lot of confidence into shopify and uh that's gonna that's gonna change for sure uh the rest um of uh of the e-commerce world <laughs> yeah for sure i it's actually i mean it's changed so much even just in like two or three years ago you're right like the big brands i felt like we would have to convince them that shopify was a good solution it's that's not an issue anymore like there's a there, it might come up the odd time but like the biggest brands out there um are open to considering shopify as a viable solution which and it is like it's a great solution um so yeah it's getting more and more and i it's i mean the potential even though it sounds like they have a lot of merchants like they haven't really cracked the international scene at all um the offline world at all um there's there's a ton more like it, you know when i think like oh are they capped out on growth i I actually think they haven't even scratched the surface. So yeah, totally. they just have to do a few things right in the next few years. But I, I, I think the future is still super bright for them. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing right now growth in the European market. We haven't talked about uh, South America, Asia, and all this kind of thing. I mean, I mean, it's it's like you say, it's just very small part of it. And even in the United States, it's still very new, you know? So it's like, yeah. it's it's crazy uh, where we are right now. And I, I st- and if we're looking that at, uh, let's say, ma- macro level for merchants, I mean, we're still in the early stage of e-commerce right now. So we're still... Mm-hmm 
Signal at the beginning. I always call it the second wave because we had the wave from 1996 to about 2010, 2012. And then after that, the second wave came where it's like evolution of e-commerce now, you know? Yeah. And what's interesting is it's growing the percentage that America or North America um, represents in the global commerce is getting less and less and less every year. Um, I just did a talk on international commerce. I had a few of the stats. I don't have them handy here, but um, like, you know, we're heading towards it's going to be what, 4.8 trillion in 2021 but the percentage like three years ago north america represented about 20 percent and it's gone down a percent every year and they're projecting it to go down more and more it's still growing north Mm -hmm. america but in relation to the rest of the world it's becoming less and less significant so um yeah i think as long as shopify positions themselves right for that then there's huge huge opportunity crazy so what are the next step now for for bold what's coming for bold in the next let's say couple months or a year from now what we can expect from uh from the from this company from your company yeah (laughs) um for sure uh we got a lot of exciting things we're working on i can i can speak to some of them um one of the big things we're investing a lot of time in is uh um how can AI and machine learning improve our apps and not just our apps, but improve merchant stores. So whether it's through our app or through a store directly, um, we have a kind of a basic live version, but there's, that's kind of like the tip of the iceberg. Like a lot of the stuff is behind the scenes that we're, we're working on. Um, so, you know, I think we've seen drastic uh, we we did an integration with we have a product called the Bold Brain I, you might know about it but um, we did an integration with it with our upsell app and just to test and see if we applied machine learning to upsells could we get them to convert better than what a human who owned a store did um, you know because like the logic is you know your products you know what sells with them you should be able to great create good upsells. Um, on average, it was it was a couple months ago. I looked at these stats, but like on average, the a human created upsell converted around eleven percent. This is like globally across our apps. Um, when we looked at merchants for the first ninety days of using the brain and upsell, it jumped up to about thirty three percent. And we had some merchants seeing like I think the highest was about sixty eight percent. Like. <laughs> conversion on an upsell offer. So we started to look at it and we started like, well, what, like, why is it so much different? Right. And so what's interesting is like the brain uses just data and it recommends the best product based off what someone's buying. And so we actually saw a scenario where it was on a site selling barbecue supplies. And so they had a flipper barbecue flipper and the thing that converted the best, what, what do you think it was? I don't know the 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 the, um, the, the spatula. I don't know something like that. <laughs> what it was another flipper. Another flipper. Wow. But but like that was just one example where like a merchant wouldn't think like, oh, I'm gonna recommend barbecue sauce or I'm gonna recommend yeah. barbecue apron or I'm gonna, but that's how you think, right? But just looking at the data where it removes all your opinions, it looks at the best thing is, you know what? People want two flippers because one's always dirty and they want one by the barbecue, one inside. So it was the number, It anyways. And there was a bunch of other scenarios like this where just by looking at the data, it doubled and tripled the average conversion rate for stores. So then we started looking at, well, how, where, where else can we use this data? So um, we're just launching the integration with bu- product bundles, so it'll make smart bundles. So, And I think the other reason why it converted so well, too, is we find a lot of merchants maybe do know what converts best, but they just don't have time. Like you might have hundreds and hundreds of products. You don't have time to create upsells for all of them. So if you could just push a button and automate your upsells um, – you you're probably getting bad because you're lazy you might just create not you but like, whatever because you don't have time you might just create an upsell where it's like if anyone buys any hat recommend this ring 
because you don't have time to create a hundred different ones. So you just do like a generic offer rather than a unique offer by every single product um, where the brain can do that. Uh, it can do the same thing with bundles. So rather than manually creating every single bundle, if you want to put smart bundles and have it just automatically create them, like I'm sure Amazon does that automatically, right? Like they're not creating them. So same, same concept. Um, with loyalty points, uh, this isn't live yet, but we're doing an integration where, you know, when you have a certain amount of points and you get like an email from Air Miles and it says, hey, you've got 10,000 points, here's what you can buy. Rather than just recommending random products that fit in those points, recommend products based off of what the customer already bought in those points, they're going to be more likely to convert, et cetera, et cetera. Then that's kind of the basic level. But now going a step further, we're looking at using that same data and actually real time personalizing the front of a store based off of data. So now imagine you have a category on your, on your website powered by the brain. It's just called like, um, Literally, like a menu item on your website would be just for you. You click on that, and it's all the products you're most likely to like, kind of like based off of – it could be off your shopping history, but also off of things like your your location, your gender, your age, all these other things. And that ties into like – there's a lot of ways we, we get this data. Um, so that's a big focus of ours is is basically like making – merchants lives better or easier like to not have to do the work so it's that's one part but also to sell more like so that's going to be a that is already a big focus of ours we're building a full ai team which is actually really hard to do they're one of the hardest like really really good ai devs are hard to find um we've got a good group of them now but we're building out a whole ai division um to really see what we can do to help stores sell more using machine learning. So um, that's a big focus of ours. Um, and really just like deep, deep improvements in a lot of our apps. Like you're going to see some big stuff coming out for subscriptions, some big stuff coming out in the wholesale space. And again, this is just like <clears throat> um, Shopify has a great wholesale solution. And we always say to people, there is, like there's not one solution for everything right um but we look at like we have a lot of our merchants that do b2b and they have issues with like how do they handle back orders how do they handle time payments how do they handle like one click reorders where they want to like customers want to just go in order the same thing plus or minus a couple things how do they handle um terms like credit limits um so we actually built in so we, we have a we have a couple beta users for this already, but it probably won't be live for the public for a couple months, but a full um, wholesale suite of products that you might just want a basic wholesale pricing. That's a piece of cake. But maybe you want to have credit limits by customer where someone is like allowed to order up to $2,000 on credit, $10,000 on credit, whatever, um, net, you know, net 10, 30, 60 discounts if they pay early, blah, blah, blah. Like just all the standard stuff that you need for B2B. Um, we're building tools to handle all of that. And it's going to be like, what solution does Phil need? Might not be the same solution that Steve needs. And so that's how we're looking at it. We're looking at like every merchant is unique. And so with our solutions, they're all not like, here's the box. It's like you can pick and choose which modules do you want to plug in. Um, so you'll be seeing some of that. I, I, I can speak to that because that's already kind of in private beta. Uh, yeah, I don't know. A couple of things I can't say yet, but those are the, those are two really big focuses you'll see. That, that's soon, crazy. So. Yeah, that's tall. I mean, the brain stuff, it's totally crazy. I think it's a lot of people will <laughs> love that. And it, like you said, I mean, it's going to save like so many guesswork or anything like that. I mean, and at the end, merchants want to make their, their life simpler and uh, make more money. So it, it goes right together, you know, so... Uh, Wow, that's yeah. that's super cool. Jason, it was really a real pleasure to have you oh, today. Uh, I think uh, we had a great jam here on a, a couple of stores. Uh, congratulations to you and your team for this oh, huge thanks. growth. I think that's totally amazing. Uh, and, you know, any any business like you or uh, pursuing a dream like that, I mean, uh, I mean, I wish them uh, all the best. I think that's uh, that's insane. Um, like you say, sometimes there's part of luck and there's part also of 
of you know pu putting the the stars on the right direction and uh, you got it right there so uh, you know I wish you all the best and well, thank uh, you talk to you soon you know uh, you will you will yep. be uh, we should probably talk uh, another time in six months from now and see where all this went and especially after the Shopify Unite so we'll have more details <laughs> <laughs> and more stuff Maybe to speak about exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes yeah. um, thank you again it was great having you and guys don't miss next week uh, chill with Phil we have another great entrepreneur that will be with us so um, and all the sh all the information will be in the show notes uh, bolt commerce, the apps, everything we talked about today, so you can have a, a look and already test their app. Most of the apps of bolt commerce have 30 days, 60 days, I think, trial periods. So a lot of time to try and to monetize them until you take the decision to go further. So that's totally amazing. Guys, thank you very much yeah. and have a great week. You've just listened to the Chill with Phil podcast with your host, Phil Kiprianu. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Google Play and catch our next episode.